Hello everyone, Toby from AbleJumper.com here and I just got the mood pan from Roland, a new MIDI controller and internal sound player and I uh, wanted to check it out because I wanted to check out the MIDI capabilities of it and I just thought I would make a little review and first impressions thing here, what I think it can do great what I think it's for and what I guess it's not really for. Okay, so first of all, what is it? It's just an electronic hand pen with built-in sounds. We're currently hearing the built-in sounds. We have quite a selection of different sounds here and we have some different uh, scales here we can pick from and we can have this running via USB. I'm currently sending this into Ableton Live. We are hearing the sounds in Ableton Live, but it has built-in speakers as well, so you can actually use this standalone, and it has a little background music meditation thingy here as well. So the funny thing is, uh, if you turn this on, it gives you something, some atmospheric, sounds to play with but it doesn't really always match the scale so depending on how you're musically trained and what you like and what you don't like to my ears that doesn't really fit scale wise but i mean that's for you to decide or for each player to decide itself so the speakers are um, there are three speakers built in here and they sound quite nice for um, the internal sounds it's not like very loud but yet you can plug it into a speaker as well um, or send it via usb to a different door or somewhere where you want to record it um, but if like you can connect it via Bluetooth as well and use it as a Bluetooth speaker um, if you want to listen to music in a nice great sound don't use this as your speaker it's just that the speakers are matching the internal sounds but they are not matching this like a uh, Bluetooth box you can get for like 100 quid or something that would be definitely a better choice and then maybe just plug this music in there, plug this thing in there and have the sounds playing um, over a proper Bluetooth speaker if you're using other music than the internal sounds here. Cool, okay, so um, as we said, we can do some nice expressive stuff here. The pads are quite nice and um, they're matching the velocity so the responsiveness for the internal sounds quite well as soon as we use it with MIDI which we're going to do um, later on in this video or which I'm going to show you later on in this video I'm not so convinced with, uh, with how the velocity is, uh, is translating and the dynamics uh, is translating to play other sounds via MIDI. Okay so you get an app where you can access a few of the parameters in here you can pitch diff the different scales to different um, notes if you want to and um, what else do we got here? Oh, it's actually you can use your second, a second touch to dampen, to dampen the ringing sound here. You get this extra effect button here which is like if you hold this down so if you're listening to this and now if I touch the effect button it's more like a slap. Um, there is a term for it for professional hang, pair, hang players. Um, I don't know it, I'm sorry. But you can hear, it's like, like if you're um, hitting a, uh, a hand pen harder with your fingers in a different way. You get as well this sound here. And it sounds like there is some panning happening as well, but it's actually, yeah, okay. So little things here, which like, really nice for the internal sounds but again if you're using with MIDI it's like not really like a, like a really professional MIDI instrument usable to some extent here but if you're really excited about like um, expressional stuff there are a few other uh, gear recommendations I will um, show you a few links later on in, the, in this video as well okay so now if we are Connecting this via USB, not sending the sound over, but going into Ableton Live and actually playing some sounds in here. We can now play piano and it has a 
sustain function so I have a on note and I have an off note when I release the finger so this is and you might be hearing that already that we have quite a full-on piano sound even if I'm not hitting that hard. So if we have a look in like MIDI values here, we're getting the on MIDI values are going from one to 127. So that's what it's scaled to. So a very, very um, quiet sound. And let's have a look if we put the note on here, we get a lower value. And then if we're hitting it hard, we should get 127, which we're getting now. So now if I'm playing to play going from quiet to loud. I want like this going louder, 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 louder. You can hear and you can see what's happening already. It's jumping quite fast to play quite loud uh, velocity or producing quite loud, um, quite high velocity values. So um, there is, n I couldn't find anything where I actually could access a velocity curve inside the device it comes with an app which you can use to modify a few things here changing the pitches changing the volume of the synth sounds and the actual sounds you're playing with the background stuff and and all that all that stuff but i couldn't find anything quickly so if there is something i couldn't find it where you can actually access those sounds to adjust them to make it playing a little bit more expressive and more um, having a better translation of what you're actually doing on that thing. So that's kind of like a minus on the MIDI um, here already. It has a few nice things here for the MIDI. So if we go to a different um, sound here, which will change internally to send over different data, we are actually getting some aftertouch values here per note, which is great because that means we can actually change things here playing a different sound now in Ableton Live. If I hit it, if I press it, and then if I um, push it a little bit with more force, you can see down below here, and you can hear, maybe let's do this, make this a little bit quieter. You can see, and you can hear that I'm modulating this wire pushing into the pad after it, and this is sent per note. It's being sent on the same channel, which is a little bit weird because usually it's being, um, or always depends on how people implement MIDI stuff here, but um, it's being sent on the note value. So it's a polyphonic aftertouch, which is usually sent via um, different channels here. but it's quite nice for um, changing the sounds here. Again, if now the velocity would be a little bit more, more accurate, this is not a very velocity responsive um, sound here I'm using, so this is not the best to experiment it, but with the piano, we can hear that quite well. It's quite full on. So it is like, I'm not sure. I mean, if you are really into expressive stuff and if you want to touch stuff, and have really nice and accurate translation, you might want to look into the Airy Touch here, which is a different MIDI controller, especially designed for stuff like this. So obviously it's a little bit more expensive because it's a smaller company from France. Um, plus, um, but it's, it's much more advanced if you are looking into controlling things via pushing stuff here. So that's definitely something you want to check out if you're looking for um, using an interface for that. Okay, so uh, if you're looking for um, an electronic hand pen, which really gives you, not really, which gives you a much better translation of like little things, um, playing stuff here, internal sounds and really wise, it's um, working much better is the Neo Tone here. Obviously, that's like a completely different price tag. The um, Mood Pen here is going for around 600. If you uh, want to check it out, there is a link in the video description here, which is an affiliate link. If you buy via this link, you can support me without paying extra. So highly appreciate if you 
wanna uh, use that link here. But if you're into like professional hand pen feeling things, you need to take some more, um, you need to spend some more money, I'm afraid. This is not, like this is a great nice starting out thing for like maybe playing a little, meditating, uh, whatever, just having a little go and relaxing. This one is nice for that, but as soon as you say like, well, I'm like, we're talking about like professional music creating, using it with a door like Ableton Knife, for example. I don't see this making a lot of people happy with this approach. So this is not really, I don't see this really in there for, um, for that purpose. But again, I mean, people use things differently and whatever makes fun and whatever makes you happy um, should be the thing to do. So if you just want a plug and play solution, this might be a really nice tool for you. Um, if you want to dive deeper into more like electronic drumming um, with Ableton Live performing electronic music or performing uh, original music or other music with um, Adore, Ableton Live is a great choice here and I created a lot of resources for um, actually some problem solving in Ableton Live. I do this via max for live devices which are plug-ins which are compatible with the sweet version of Ableton Live per default. So you can check them out at abletondrama.com and if you want to check out the mood pen, let's switch back to the hand pen sound here because that's really what most people are looking for. This is a nice tool to play a little, have fun, enjoy yourself. That's great. Yes, that's uh, my impression. I hope that gave you an idea of what this might be for and uh, for who this might be for and what Roland had in mind putting that on the market. So uh, unfortunately, not really for the whole professional MIDI use here. I mean, the price for what it can do, I, I, I get it with the speakers and um, with their um, Bluetooth functionality, sending over MIDI via Bluetooth as, as, as well. I would have uh, hoped for that if it has an integrated MIDI capability, that the MIDI capability is a little bit more advanced. Maybe there's a velocity curve um, somewhere hidden and uh, it's um, then it would be a minus point for the user interface because I couldn't find it in the app. Connecting everything was quick and easy for me. Um, little minor things like here, um, it's called the moon pad, mood pad, sorry, not moon pad. And the MIDI port is called MN10, which is interesting because um, it's a different name than the actual device. Little things like that where I think like, well, actually, this could be could be a little bit um, a little bit more detail um, could be or a little bit more law for little details like that could be put in here. Um, I like that it is quite small, but it's still because of the speakers and stuff. I think it's still it's it's not light. It's it's uh, and for the size, it's quite some some weight. Um, yeah, but yes, um, has. This touch and that's not taking every, obviously, not taking every hit if you play too fast. Little things like that where you think like, well, totally fine for just playing a little bit and getting into that limitation as soon as you say like, well, actually I want to create something to a professional standard. I don't see that this is for that market and then you probably need to spend more money having a look at the Airytouch 2 or um, on the, I always forget the name, on the Neotone, which feels much, much different. Like if you're talking electronic handpan experience, that is on a different level and the price tag is on a different level here as well. Okay, cool. So I hope I gave you some ideas here. If you're interested in this MIDI monitor, that's just an online MIDI monitor you can use via your web browser if you wanna check what kind of MIDI messages am I sending. Um, just go to blog ableton slash online minus monitor minus, minus 
Online minus medium minus monitor. Here is the full URL or search for online media monitor Ableton drama. And you can just use this here via your web browser. You don't need to install anything. It needs Google uh, Chrome as a web browser or Firefox. The latest version should work. So little things like that. I hope that gave you some impressions here of what's possible with the mood pads and um, enjoy making music and have fun. <laughs>